you know, smaller numbers. And that's tricky for me, you know, because like for me, like the hostages are nonstop in my thoughts, like mm -hmm. nonstop. I mean, I came all the way to Costa Rica with a bracelet. Mm -hmm. I even have masking tape in my bag so I can bring mm -hmm. masking tape. I didn't put it on today, I forgot. But, you know, uh, the masking tape to mark the numbers, which is what one of the hostages' mothers, um, Rachel Pollen Goldberg, has asked people to do to remember the number. So, you know, the issue with the hostages is, is like, Again, I, I, I don't think that like necessarily, it's, it's not it's not helpful for me to like say, oh, there's only like 120 mm -hmm. or 130, because that, that feels too uh, dismissive of this mm -hmm. like very real pain. Mm -hmm. You know, what's, what's, what's hard for me about the hostage situation is that I feel like the Israeli government is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. And it's, it really feels like, um, you know, the Israeli leadership, Bibi Netanyahu really, is, is is not really doing what he needs to be doing. He's sacrificing the hostages yeah. on, right. on, on his own. He's sacrificing. Own, in his own interest. And that, too, goes to this sort of sense of, like, you know, who are we? Mm. Who are we? What are we doing? What is that? And, you know, there was a big article in yesterday's New York Times about this, where the New York Times basically did this investigative report and found that, that, that Netanyahu keeps moving the goalposts. Mm -hmm. That he's very purposely sabotaging the hostage talks, the ceasefire talks, which we knew already for a long time. I mean, mm -hmm. people have been reporting this for months and months and months, and it's very obvious, you know. And like it used to be that, you know, the Jewish people, we used to tell ourselves that we believe in life. We value life abo above all else. You know, there's a, there's a verse in the Torah, Bacharta Bachayim, like choose life. And there's zillion ser sermons. I've heard a zillion sermons in my life about this idea that the Jewish people value life. It's actually one of the things that, that's, it's one of the memes that's used to say why we're better than Palestinians, because we value life and Palestinians don't. I mean, that's something that I grew up on also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's really, no, I'm no, sorry. No, 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 it's, but, you, you know, should be sorry. It's, <laughs> and it's it the just, narrative, again, it it's the narrative, yeah. and this narrative is, is used to justify killing. Mm -hmm. it's, um, yeah. But it's really, it's really painful. I mean, this is really painful. This, this, this is painful in a lot of ways. This reality is just, Anyway, so that's why, <laughs> that's why um, the work we're doing feels like, I feel like being sort of landing here, sort of mm -hmm. by accident, this is by not where, this is like, <laughs> it's all another story, yeah. we'll tell another story, that story another time, but it feels like this work we're doing feels so important. Mm -hmm. I, I feel, I often say this work is not about us, it's being worked through us. And again, I go back to spirit because I feel like there's something here in in the beginning of all this story. I said, Palestinian and Israeli are noble enemies that have chosen this situation for humanity to witness and really to move up in the choice for freedom. And I often say we're fighting for freedom for Palestinian, but the whole world is not free. Mm. And so we need collective liberation for Palestine to be free we need to free the whole world because the whole world is not free the whole world is like manipulated programmed and put into this corner of justifying the killing of humans in the yes. name of you know a narrative that is yes. not even complete yes. and 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 for me that's really that really goes to the core of it like in, in the circle that we had last week, actually the day you arrived, mm -hmm. and we had a, an Israeli that just arrived, landed also from, from Israel, and, and just being in this circle and feeling the love that unites us for the land and the disengagement from the representative of the government or the people, it's like, it's not even we the Palestinian and you the Israeli or we the Israeli or we the Jews and you the Palestinians actually what is happening and how can we together create a different reality and and for me that's the activation of peace it's really how can we use all the resources that we have right now to stop this genocide mm -hmm. to stop what's happening to really reclaim our sovereignty reclaim our freedom and together my vision is really together maybe from Costa Rica to Israel Palestine to go and walk and stop you know mm -hmm. literally stop put mm -hmm. it down and I know it, it seems unrealistic 
and it seems crazy and it seems like 10 months or 11 months into this genocide that Bibi is doing whatever he wants, like nobody's able to stop him. But I think it's an illusion because we're not, we're seeing him doing what he's doing, but we're not seeing all the mascara behind mm. him of the political interest mm -hmm. from the other countries, mm. whether in Europe or the states that are allowing this, even the Arab states that are allowing this. Mm. And so really I call for a movement, for individual movement to wake up and take back our freedom and our sovereignty and stop this madness, mm -hmm. like literally stop this madness. Mm -hmm. And it takes the courage of every individual in all parts of the world mm -hmm. to do that. And it starts with us. So the only place where I have sovereignty, the only place where I can start is me. Mm -hmm. And so even if it's a drop in the ocean, at some point a drop with other drop makes the ocean, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And we're blessed here in Costa Rica with lots of water. <laughs> and lots of water. It's beautiful. Look, it cleared up while we were sitting here. You see? Mm -hmm. We sat you, down and yeah. it was all foggy. And I was, <laughs> I was a little uh, disappointed because I wanted to show off Costa yeah. Rica and this beautiful view you have. This is the so lushness of the, the lush greens. Yeah. It really is this feeling like of just not Israel. It's like this, the exact opposite of Israel mm -hmm. where you feel the possibilities. You feel like life can be different. Yeah. yeah. And that's... um. I, it, that feels to me like part of the problem also in Israel is that people are so stuck. Like what you mentioned before about feeling that there's no choice. I mean, you hear this from the government often. This is a war of no choice. This is a war of no choice. Mm -hmm. And that feels like a, a justification. It's you know, a we say it's just, yeah. yeah, it's rhetoric. It's rhetoric to say we have no choice. And it's like, mm -hmm. no, no, no. Mm -hmm. We have lots and lots of choices. We have lots of choices. Mm -hmm. Every single time we choose.